Well, everybody's shame. Everybody grew. Everybody's shame. Mary, Mary, on my mind. The folks are going, but this is all mine. Mary, Mary, want to be with you. You're listening to The Morning Show with Kai and Friends. Live from Cleveland, Ohio, as well as some other mystery location. Brought to you by Catalano TV. Start your day with a chuckle and a laugh with Kai Brancaccio and friends. Let's get ready to rock and roll, baby. We'll sing my song. Well, if we're only gonna be that too. And bouquets, bitches. Welcome to the morning show. And you know what kind of day it is. <laughs> it's. Well, I walked out to the street today. I went out. It's Friday morning. You know it's Friday when you smell a fresh scent of garbage in the air. Yes. Took the garbage can out to the corner. Put it on the road and look around and smell. The smell of garbage in the air means it's Friday. It's going to be a great Friday because there's garbage in the air. (laughs) The neighbors recycles get blown over by the wind and you're picking up that garbage in your front yard every week (laughs) because of stupid people (laughs) put stuff in there (laughs) that just blows away can you imagine having a big garbage tote and just taking one wrapper of like a candy bar and put it in that tote and then one little thing of this and put it in that tote one little thing of that put in that tote i mean (laughs) Who puts their garbage in their garbage can one piece at a time like that? So when that thing when that thing gets knocked over, it's all over the front yard, down the road. (laughs) Every freaking Friday. (laughs) I gotta believe a lot of that stuff blows right into the lake. Pathetic. Pathetic. Anyways, (laughs) aside from that, the fresh scent of garbage is in the air, doggone. It's gonna be a fantastic Friday, I tell you. It is. It's going to be a great day because we decided it, and we'll start out doing Kai's morning stretch, taking each respective limb and push it out into its direction. Stretch a little bit. The right arm way out. The left leg way out. Don't shake it all about. The left arm stretched out. The right arm stretched out. Deep breath. Deep breath while you're doing the stretch. And then carefully thoughtfully just think of one at least one thing you're thankful for there's a plethora of things to be thankful for in this world of abundance that we are so blessed to live in there's never been a better time in all of humanity never been a better time to be alive in terms of the abundance of humanity i know you'll watch those news shows some of you watch the news and You'll hear bad story after bad story and how terrible things are and this and this and that and, oh, this happened and that happened. And, and, uh, of course, you know, the manipulation of the media is getting you angry, right, and getting people angry. And things have become such – the nature of of, uh, news stories has become like clickbait. That's that's what it's come down to, and that's why it's all garbage (laughs) because it's not based in – logic or truth anyways we do have let me get back on track here we got a lot to be thankful for i i have no trouble thinking of a number of things to be thankful for and boy you know if even if if, if things are really bad there's really simple things to be thankful for The, the chirp of a bird you know i don't particularly care for squirrels but uh, some people like to take a look at the squirrels and and uh, maybe feed the birds and and uh, look at the squirrel standing there with his natural umbrella being his his tail just you know docked over his head. <laughs> they, do, they use that for the sunlight too, I guess. Anyways, there's simple things to really take pleasure in. As simple as that may sound, uh, those are the things that can make you smile inside 
and start the cascade of effects of having a positive day, having a positive experience, achieving something today, getting something done that you've been looking forward to, or at least make make a dent in it, you know, that, those kind of things. And uh, by, by doing these little things and moving forward, you'll end up with something uh, greater than what you anticipated. And had you not had the uh, intention, you, you would have ended up with nothing moving towards that direction. So that's it's a good way to look at it. So today's going to be a great day. Appreciate you all coming in here. Hope everyone's doing good. Uh, let's take a look at the chat, see what we got. Miss Honeybee chiming in. Good to see everybody. And Kahuna Nui in the house. Great to see you, Kahuna. Hope you're doing well. In Minnesota. <laughs> I just love saying that. <laughs> and uh, what's Kahuna Nui say? Let's see. I was in a different room with Donkey Conkington waiting for the show to start. Why is that happening? Ah, great, great point, uh, Kahuna. If you remember yesterday, yesterday the uh, show, and I'm addressing what you're saying here right now, actually. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yesterday, when we started the show, we went to... Uh, we went to Rumble to start out the show, and usually when you you go in Rumble Studios, it'll give you a, you'll hit start the stream. It'll give you a five second countdown, and then it'll go. Well, when I started the stream on Rumble yesterday, it gave me the five second countdown, and then it gave me five hundred and something seconds, some some outrageous number, and I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not waiting five hundred seconds to start my show. That's not going to happen. So immediately uh, got out of it, started a stream on uh, StreamYard. And so um, in this morning, just the short story is this morning, I wanted to have my backup plan in place in case Rumble Studios failed. And so um, I appreciate you bringing that up. That is some, I, the, the intention is to use the uh, StreamYard list, the show on YouTube so that people see it. It's a commercial for the show. It's a placeholder. And then when it's time for the show, you basically delete that when you go with the live stream. It feeds into the live stream on the Catalano TV, and then uh, then you're covered. People look for it, and they will know it's there because they've they've uh, decided they're going to watch it or whatever. And uh, so in this particular case, I did not delete that stream before this stream started, and uh, that was an that was an insurance plan. So appreciate you bringing that up. I hope that explains it to you. Uh, I I don't want to lose even one lo uh, even one viewer based on that. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Good point. And man, ah, uh, that means we don't have donks here. Uh, that sucks. Let's see. Oh, here, <laughs> Miss Honeybee. Woohoo! Here come the garbage truck down the road Friday morning. <laughs> All right. So you ask, what national day is it? I know you. Inquiry minds want to know. What national day is it? Uh, today, one of the national days today, we have a number of them, let me tell you. National Only Child Day. Now, this phenomena, only child, happens in every family. At some point, you're the only child. Now. You may only be one years old before you're no longer the only child. But the National Only Child Day. So every family starts out that way. And um, these days, there are less and less children being born in the United States. You know, we don't even keep with the uh, parity with uh, a couple being two people having two children. We, we don't even keep up with that. And so... Um, we there's in danger of population collapse. However, however, we have a, a bunch of people indiscriminately, illegally entering, crossing the border uh, without being screened. So it's not like the H1 visas, they're, they're a good thing because you're bringing people who are entrepreneurs, you're bringing people who are at the cutting edge of technology, you're bringing people in that are great contributors to society, the American uh, 
the American experience. They're contributors, and they enrich the country with uh, intellectual property and so forth in their development of their career paths. So the H-1s programs are great. I think that they do a lot of good things if they are not used to displace American talent. If they are not used to displace American talent, the H-1 visa programs are quite useful. When you have people coming in indiscriminately that are not screened, that are coming in illegally, you know, let's let's be honest, the first act these people do when they come into the country is break the law. I mean, that's just, that's the way it is. That's by definition. You know, we can live in a world to pretend and deny and hide things. The truth is the truth, man. You know, you, we don't need to really hide those things. That's okay. That doesn't mean that we don't need to have a program. We need to have a legit program to bring people in the country. There's no question about that. But the way things are being done, it's it's a vote buying, it's a vote buying uh, opportunity for uh, certain people. Anyways, let's see what other national day is it? National for Twelves Day. National for Twelves Day. Yeah, um, I'm gonna skip that one. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, well, sometimes things just are irrational. National for 12th day. How about 13? What the hell's wrong with 11? Tell me. Salute. And National Colorado Day. Yeah, there's one you can embrace. I don't know if you folks have ever been to Colorado, but the natural beauty is absolutely incredible. Just incredible part of the country. I have always enjoyed Colorado. We got Mile High Stadium over there. Yeah, I've been through that airport a number of times too. How about this one? National Donate Life Blue and Green Day changes annually. The colors? Yeah, we've we changed the definitions here now in this country. <laughs> we changed definitions of uh of jabs, we changed definitions of uh hell, we don't a lot of people don't even know what the hell a woman is. <laughs> so, you know, we can change the definition of blue and green, no problem. We'll just switch them up, right? <laughs> I don't know. National Donate Life, Blue and Green Day. National Donate Life, that's 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 something to be thought about and respected. Hey, we got Donks in the house. Sorry about that, Donks. I know you were in the other chat, and um, we had that as an insurance plan. We are broadcasting this morning live from Rumble Studios, and um, so we had that. We left that up because yesterday we were uh, we were unhappy with how Rumble. Uh, went to do the launch, and it gave us a countdown of 500-some seconds. I mean, some kind of malfunction on uh, Rumble's part. So that stream was left up in the as a backup plan. So sorry we didn't delete that out there. I'm sorry you are waiting over there, Donks. I'm glad you're here. We're delighted. So cheers to you as well. Let me read his, his comment, first of all. Good morning, all y'all. I got my hands full, so can't chat much, but cheese, y'all. <laughs> Cheers, yes. I'm glad to see you in here, Docs. I understand that if you got your hands full, you can only listen. That's okay. That's great. We we appreciate the fact that you're here. Very much so. Let's see. Yep, some crosstalk in the chat. And Pool Scan Sam's here. Where's Pool Scan Sam? Oh, I gotta get caught up here. Let's see. Um where is Pool Scan Sam? Hey, Citizen M in the house. Hey, Citizen M. Citizen M released a video yesterday. Citizen M, I uh, cannot tell a lie. <laughs> I fully intend to watch your video. I've been absolutely uh, swamped, but I'm going to watch that probably sometime tonight or tomorrow. Definitely got to check out Citizen M's. Got another video out. Always puts together great content. Uh, you know, you know, somebody's good at what they do when they put together content that relates to something that you don't even watch and you're entertained. 
that's the sign of some good content. So I appreciate Citizen M. And happy Friday, by the way. And some crosstalk in the chat. Let's see. Sorry, I, I'm getting some of the comments out of order, but uh, the um, Rumble chat's a little harder to decipher. Okay, here we go. Pool Scan Sam in the house. Welcome, Pool Scan Sam. Gotta love that name. Pool Scam Sam. I think you were involved in the uh, selling of a swimming pool to the uh, the Levy family. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. A little cross talk in the chat. I think we're caught up here. Hey, Reverend Freemason in Portland. How you doing today, Reverend Freemason in Portland? What is the good word? Do you got today's word? Are you bringing that with you today? Give us today's word, Reverend Freemason in Portland. <laughs> good to see you in here. A.K.A. Portland Shane Gillis. That sounds like a pro name, too. You can hear a ball player on the football field, college ball. Portland Shane Gillis on the field. What what uh, position would the Portland Shane Gillis play? Let us know. Good morning. He says Citizen M's a good egg. That's true. And guess what? We got Justin Pizio in here also. Uh, Justin Pizio is asking, did Mr. Big Shot quit the show? Mr. Big Shot started a new job. He had his um, orientation yesterday. He started a new job. He's back in the baseball field. Um, certainly uh, wish him well. You can see he's on the rocket ship we got here. So he's still part of the Catalano family. Um, he He's going to be doing the Alpha Shot Lounge. I think he's going to be doing the Double Dose Lounge, which is the later version. Uh, and that's that schedule we'll figure that out so uh, yeah mr big shot is uh deeply engaged in his new uh, uh career path well i shouldn't say new career path but he's he's gone back to uh, his baseball experience where he actually first met joey c and so he's um he did his orientation last night he's starting the the new position and so he's i think he's gonna just He's gonna he's gonna be busy with that for a while. So we'll see how things go. And uh so that answers that. Let me see. Am I missing a comment here? Because I see somebody saying hi to Detroit by Dark. Let's see. Well, good morning, Detroit by Dark. It's a mystery why we can't see Detroit by Dark. Interesting. Then we had this problem before, did we not? This is Honeybee saying good morning to Detroit by Dark. Detroit by Dark is a great supporter of the channel. And I'm disappointed I can't see his comment. Yeah, I don't see it here. Ah, that's very weird. Okay. Anyways, uh, welcome. Welcome. So the next story, um, we had National uh, Donate Life Day, which is, you know, it's a great thing to know that uh, you've helped somebody. Oh, we had something like that yesterday, did we not? I think we did. National Day of Silence. Hey, you guys could take you guys can take that one. I'm not going to take that one. I'm running a show here. <laughs> National Day of Silence. You know, there's something to be said for um, silence in terms of uh, when you reflect or you meditate. There's some value in, in silence. And, um, of course, there's also torture in silence, right? <laughs> so put, put people in the hole for 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever, 72 hours or something. But uh, there is some benefit to, uh, to silence, I think, and meditation. I, I think the folks that meditate probably do the best in those kind of circumstances where they're uh, isolated. I, I have a... A dear friend of our family who goes on retreats, actually, several times a year, does meditation. It's like one of those monks that has a vow of not talking, right? He's uh, basically 
uh, isolated himself. He's on a retreat. He's uh, spending most of his time during the day, most of his waking hours, meditating and thinking and reflecting on life. So uh, there's a lot of value in that. That's not something most people do. In fact, very few, I'd say this, less than 1% probably do something like that. And uh, I think it could benefit your life, personally. National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. Well, there is nothing, including the slices of bread in that meal, that attract me. But, hey, to each their own. Listen, I know. I grew up, man. I was a kid. <laughs> I remember having grilled cheese when I was a kid. I remember having mac and cheese. I liked all those things. I get it. National Grilled Cheese Sandwich Day. Well, there you have it. You can get dairy and grain all in one shot. <laughs> Anyways, National Licorice Day. There's another one. National Licorice Day. Now, strangely enough, they show the red licorice. Now, they show the red licorice because um, there's a sizable percentage of people. Excuse me. Get that. Clear my throat here. There's a sizable number of people who do not care for black licorice, right? <laughs> so what do they say? National Licorice Day. And they show the red licorice, which, you know, we kind of know that that's not real licorice, right? I don't know if anybody's ever tried Sambuca or Ouzo, for that matter. I think Ouzo is made with uh, anise, I want to say. Yeah, anybody ever... Uh, Tried some of those things. Pretty strong stuff, man. Ouzo. Yep. Things happen after you have Ouzo that may sound like the, the word Ouzo. <laughs> Ouzo. <laughs> that reminds me of a story. A buddy of mine joined the service right out of high school. Went right into the service. I was working at a... Uh, Kmart at the time. The store manager wanted to take him out. We went out to the club. Took us to some uh, some some hole in the wall lounge. Never been to, you know, we were young, so it wasn't like, you know, we were familiar with such a place. Anyways, went to this club. Beer than liquor, never sicker. Liquor than beer, never fear. <laughs> that was the saying, right? Something along those lines. Well, this dude, I don't know. He he always was able to. I, I never seen anybody drink so much beer in my life. <laughs> it's like I couldn't force myself to drink that much water. How could you drink that much beer? <laughs> you know, just, know. Well, you know, I mean, obviously it's partly is because he enjoys the effects, right? And so, but I've never seen that much consumed. It's just like, it's amazing to me. There's certain things you experience in life and you see it and you're like, I could never do that. I don't think I could ever do that. And uh, you see it and you're like, okay. So this guy, he was pretty well uh, boozed up with the beer. And then um, the store manager and his dad was there actually too. Said, ah, let's get a couple shots of Uzo. I think they wanted to do the puke. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. A <laughs> couple of shots of Uzo, maybe three, maybe four. I don't know. I lost count. I know um, he went to the restroom. <laughs> Had a little vomitosis. Came back out. He was just fine. <laughs> let's drink some more. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> we'll hold off on the Uzo, I guess. Beer than liquor, never sicker. I don't know if he had much of a hangover. I don't think I talked to him the next morning. But uh, that was quite the experience. National Big Wind Day. Well, how fitting is that today? I thought the damn wind was going to lift, rip the shingles off the roof and pull off the bricks on the house, you know? I'll tell you. There were some serious winds. You know, we're close to Lake Erie, so we get our fair share of high winds. 
that even most people just a quarter mile inland don't get. So we, we get them pretty seriously here. And uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, I, something about it I like, actually, and laying in bed and hearing the wind, you know, just swooping through the neighborhood, flying right out to, to Lake Erie or back in. You know, it's like uh, you, when you're right on the edge of a large body of water, when the sun comes out, starts heating up the land, you get natural airflow currents going to the cooler body or coming from the cooling body, depending on what time of day it is, what the delta temperature is, because the land is cooling since there's no solar heating. You've got a delta T between one mass to the other, and so you get natural wind flow. And that's why it's kind of nice to be on a coast because um, you've always got something happening. It's It's a rare case where you have a super high pressure system in and there's... Not a whole lot of either going on, even though during the time, you know, you got changes in day, you're always going to get some wind. So it's kind of nice that way. In fact, uh, we rarely have to use the air conditioner, which is, you know, kind of cool. We, we can open the windows at night, let the place cool off. And as soon as in the morning, as soon as you see, now you can change this based on humidities, but as soon as you see the temperature outside is the same as the temperature inside, that's when we close it all up. Close it all up and it stays cool in the house for the rest of the day. Now, if you have three super hot days where it never cools down at all at night, that's when, you know, you're, you're into air conditioning. I don't think we had to run it once last year. Yeah, not not a single time. You know, so so this year I would expect there'll be a, probably a week or two that we'll have to run it. We'll see. Um, but uh, me and Miss Honeybee, we're not real fans of air conditioning, quite honestly. Um, we do like our kayaking though, so we like to get out on the uh, on the rivers and get out there. And so even if it's a hot day, you know, you, you get out on the kayak, you, you dip those toes and feet in the water. It's just uh, it's just nice, and the water is always cool. So, anyways, enough of that. So, I think we went through the uh, national days, national big wind day. Um, we've got people in the Davos sphere that have plenty of wind in a lot of different ways. <laughs> Some of them have terrible wind in both facets, but uh, <laughs> we'll move forward with that. Let's check on the chat here, see see what's going on, folks. Um, oh, we got some. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing about our chat. If you care to, please do uh, participate. And let us know what the weather is in your area. It's kind of cool. Listen, you know, is it something? Oh, we know the weather. The point of of talking about the weather is because we have a a huge community here we got guys who are in summer when we're in winter we got great folks in the land down under we got great listeners and so it's kind of cool to have the chat go back and forth we got folks in minnesota like kahuna nui i guarantee you that dude's got something different going on than what you got going on wherever you are more than likely and um even like you know i'm on the north coast of the united states he's He's close to the North Coast. He's actually further from the North Coast of the United States than I am, but that's because he's uh, west of me, and so he's he's uh, he may not he's not as close to the border as I am because I'm like right out near the shores, and uh, he he's farther north though, and he's he's further west, and he sees. He sees temperatures, man, that are a lot colder than we do, and he gets piles of snow that are a lot higher than we get. Orders of magnitude, maybe even, I'd say, sometimes, depending on what time of the year it is. So it's kind of neat to have the uh, the chat go back and forth and just share, you know, what's going on in our community here. What's What are people waking up to today? What What's the difference? You know, like I said, we got rain and lots of high wind this morning. Just interesting. We got 45, I think, outside, which is not bad. I'm not going to complain about it. It's above freezing, right? You know, we're in the mid, we're almost in mid April. So let's get caught up in the chat here. What do we got? Um, let's see. This Sunny B says 45 now and a high of 46. And Mason and Portland, 
Oh, okay, we got that one already. So Sis and M's a good egg. Good morning, Justin PTO. Yep, we answered that one. And of course, we said hello to Detroit by Dark, even though we can't see him in our chat here. I'm, I'm glad she can see him. So somehow we'll have to figure that out. We've had this issue before. It's very strange. Um, Justin Pizio, a little crosstalk in the chat. Great to see you in here. Chilino! Hey, it's Chilino! Chilino in the house. Chilino, guess what? Chilino. You get the Virgin Bell. That's right. You get the Virgin Bell. Congratulations. Why you ask that? Just because. <laughs> Good to see you in here. Hey, we got Venom talking here. Welcome, Venom. I hope you're doing good. I hope the hope the orientation went great last night. Let us know. He says no Alpha Shot Lounge next Wednesday at six. I have training. Okay. There you go. And Kahuna Nui. Ah. <laughs> Kahuna Nui. The perfect grilled cheese sandwich makes you forget all your problems momentarily. <laughs> Unless, of course, you react to grains and dairy. <laughs> the sad truth about that is you might not even know it. <laughs> I mean, listen, when have there been prolonged times where you haven't had either grains or dairy? So you might not even know how much different you might feel if you didn't eat those things. Now, granted, listen, I know everybody's different. You know, there's 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 a lot of differences. But the only way to know is uh, when you do a uh, elimination diet. And then you find out that uh, there's things. It, it affects your behavior. It affects your state of mind. There's, there's some interesting things about grains and dairy, which a lot of people aren't aware of. I wasn't aware of them years ago. But, yes, I have to agree with that. The perception is the perfect grilled sandwich makes you forget all your problems momentarily. I'd even say that might be the case for a nice uh, mac and cheese, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really similar combination. The funny thing is, is that um, tons of carbs are right? Tons of hidden sugars. The body doesn't know the difference between something that tastes sweet and something that's just high carbs and it's just highly processed with uh, huge amounts of surface area because the particles are so very tiny. Um, when we talk about surface area, we're talking about how you can metabolize. The, the larger the surface area, because you're tiny particles, the faster it can metabolize, and the quicker you'd raise your uh, sugar, I guess, in your system technically, because you're able to absorb that that fast. And uh, never before in history have there been particles that small, right? Then we have now, we have the ability to process like never before. So something else to consider. And uh, Kahuni Nui says, hey, Venom Spider. No, that's Miss Honeybee. Let's see. Let's see. Miss Honey Bee says, hey, Venom Spider. And Kahuna Nui says, hey, Venom, miss you, buddy. And uh, <laughs> here's an important one. Not that that wasn't important. This one's really important, though. Rest in peace, OJ. That news cut me to pieces. <laughs> well, yeah. The Buffalo Bills, the reason they said that um the reason they said that they know that OJ was innocent is because the Buffalo Bills always choke. They never stab. <laughs> bad, bad joke. But uh, yeah, so OJ said he he never found the perpetrators of these acts that you know of course he was self-professed as innocent and he never found the perpetrators. Of course he wrote a book if I did it. <laughs> Whatever the hell. But he said he never found the perpetrators and he never saw them. And the reason he never saw them is because he did not have mirrors in the house. <laughs> 
Barão Pumps. That's pretty funny, Pulse Can't Sam. Let's see what Venom says. Hey, Mrs. Honeybee, they couldn't get the ring off. They had to transport her to Baltimore to the best surgeon. I couldn't go with her because of my things yesterday. I feel like crap because of it. Oh, man, that that's, yeah. Well, you, you know, you got the responsibilities of a new job. It's understandable. Yeah, it's, that's too bad that uh, they couldn't even handle that. Uh, the uh, simple task of uh, removing a ring. Sounds, uh, that's too bad. Um, well, hopefully she's doing better now. Yep, some crosstalk in the chat. Sorry to hear that. That sucks, yeah. I hope she's okay. Certainly wish her all the best. Hey, hey, we got Dom the Cat in the house. Dom the Cat. How you doing? That's one cool cat there. Dom the Cat. That's the boss's son. How you doing, Dom? Good morning, one and all. What is going on with the feed? Is there something that uh not aware of? Is there an issue with the feed? Please let us know. Um, <laughs> should be good. I'm not getting any reports of uh, audio troubles. Oh, we can't do this though. Um, we can we get a little more ambiance here. That was something I meant to do. I like starting out with the rocket ship, you know, with the whole crew. It's kind of cool. Dom is in the house. Let's see. Um, I think we're caught up here. Let's get to Poolscan. Sam says, Venom must be the new Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> and Kahuna Nui chimes in. Miss Honeybee sneaks grilled cheese sandwiches when Kai is not in the house. Fact. <laughs> not true, actually. Not true. Kai does not. Um, I do not um, impose my views onto my dear, lovely, better half. I do not impose my views on my dear, lovely, better half. However, she, like me, has the same food sensitivities. And so um, by choice, she she adopts the same same things. That she'll, she has things I don't have now, mind you, um, that she wishes she doesn't have. But, you know, there's a moments where, you know, just like Bill Clinton, a critical lapse in judgment. I the Twinkie, <laughs> something like that. But so she she will have things. I I um I don't know how else to put it. Unusually disciplined, very very uh disciplined. I guess would be one way to put it. Um, very rarely will I uh, deviate, but that's okay. Like there is a rare occasion where I will actually have spaghetti. Now. That spaghetti is actually made with red lentils. And I'm going to tell you, growing up as an Italian kid, I missed having my pasta. So once in a great while, I'll have some red lentil spaghetti. And um, you know what's amazing to me? We get the Barilla brand red lentil spaghetti. I'll be damned if you can't tell the difference between that and real pasta. The difference is in the process. You have to cook it longer. Then you do uh, regular spaghetti, and you have to cook it. Um, it's it's not the al dente experience that you would get. You have to be real careful with red lentil pasta. If you undercook that, it's gonna it's gonna weigh in your gut like a ton of bricks, man. <laughs> so you have to. That's the one thing I would tell people if you're gonna try the red lentil pasta, which is a wheat free product. It's lentils are actually legumes. They're high in protein. They have a lot of different uh, nutritional uh, vitamins. So that there's some benefits to eating lentils. And so one of the interesting ways in which to consume lentils is through uh, spaghetti, red lentil spaghetti. Now, it's red lentils when you cook it, but when it's done, it, it's identical looking to just regular spaghetti. It's really interesting, and it's quite tasty. Make that with a nice uh, meat sauce. Like, I think she'll take um, some garlic. You know, everything starts with garlic. She'll take some coconut milk. 
she'll take some let's say shiitake mushrooms and she'll a little bit of onions and she'll grill those up again that coconut milk being the saucy part which you know you get a non-dairy cream sauce you know it's kind of it's it's pretty tasty and then she'll um put the uh, red lentil spaghetti in the pan with it you know you cook that up you have to cook it together you, you really do people think you you cook pasta and then you serve it nope you cook pasta and then you put it in the pan that thing needs to bathe in flavor right that's the way we put it some people put a spot of wine in there too with it um we don't drink too much so we don't have often to put a spot of wine in it we have on occasion though anyways let's see what else do we get here so yeah, Miss Honeybee does not sneak grilled cheese sandwiches when Kai is not in the house. In fact, <laughs> that is funny though. I, I like that. that's pretty funny. And what's Donk say? Thank you for correcting yourself, sir. I was about to change the channel if you were going to start talking in the third person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like a Seinfeld episode or something. <laughs> Change the channel if you start talking to the third person. That's funny in and of itself. It is funny. Miss Honeybee. Yeah, well, listen. Yeah, yeah, right. You love cheese, but it doesn't like me. Um, she has noticed the, uh, well, the, the addictive component of dairy. And it changes, it, it, it affects your mind. Uh, you know, that's a fact. Um, but that's okay. You know, listen, um, she feels better without it. She's, 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 she's done the elimination diet. She knows she's tried it without, she's tried with it. And she finds she feels a lot better. If you only feel a little bit better, well, hell, who's going to give up cheese, right? If you only feel a little bit better when you don't eat, if it doesn't bother you, people aren't going to give it up, right? Unless you're just looking to, do a purely evolutionary diet, which there are, there's uh, enormous health benefits too, in my opinion. But let's let's move on to other things. People like their cheese. I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> and Miss Honeybee showing now. That's funny because she's showing cheese here. But I could tell you one thing about Miss Honeybee: she hates Swiss cheese. <laughs> Isn't that right? She hates Swiss cheese, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. She doesn't care for Swiss cheese. Poor Swiss. They're good people. <laughs> ah, Kahuna Nui says, Miss Honeybee, try Bob Evans mac and cheese. You'll love it. Okay. And uh, she might not love how she feels after because she actually can't have grains either. She's um, She has trouble. So, uh, the celiac runs in her family, so it's even more specific than uh, my, uh, my problem with grains. Hers is even more specific. So, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know. People don't want to hear about the, those kind of things too much, right? But anyways, at least you're getting some bits and pieces of information so you understand where the perspective is. We don't we don't impose our views on others. We want everybody to be healthy, of course, but uh, you go about that in the way you see fit, right? Let's see. Docs, what does Docs have to say here? Which new seeds should I pop today, guys? Jack the Ripper, X Lemon Berry Candy, or Raspberry Parfait? Well, I can't answer that. I, I wouldn't have any of those. <laughs> I'm not sure what that, actually, what are you referring to, Donks? Um, you're talking about some type of, uh, which new seeds should I pop today, guys? I don't get it. I'm, I'm at a loss here, Donks. You have to forgive my ignorance. Edumacate me. Please do edumacate me. I don't know. Is he talking about uh, like some vape vape pens or something? I don't know. What, what, what is that? Seeds and popping. Let's see what else we got. Kahuna Nui says at Donk's got to do raspberry. 
Ah, uh, and Donks says, I drink half a gallon of milk a day, so I'm a dairy lover. Well, good for you. Good for you. I hope it hope it works out for you. <laughs> Who's the first one that got under there and said, Hey, this cow got a baby. I think I'm gonna drink some of that. <laughs> Just let your imagination go wild. Who's the first one? I think I'm thirsty. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can get some of that, some of that juice out of that animal in the field over there. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some of that shit. <laughs> Just kind of funny. If you it occurs to you, why would I drink the milk from another mammal? Ugh. Don't get me wrong. I understand. Listen, you grew up with it. You were a kid. You know, it's part of your culture at some point. So I understand that. Half gallon of milk a day, though. Wow. That's a lot of damn milk, I tell you. And Doc says, I eat at least four ounces of cheese a day. Oh, Miss Honeybee is also sharing. She's had some autoimmune issues, you know, so she's, she's, um, She's going to try some Eggland's best, though, to see if those don't bother her. She has to be careful with eggs. Yeah, eggs are, you know, they have, they contain sulfur, so that could be part of what uh, the component that's troubling. Um, and Donk says, thanks at Big Kahuna Raspberry Parfait it is. Guys, can you explain to me what are you referring to? Is it a vape pen or something? And Kona knew he says, why not eggs? And Miss Honeybee answers, feel terrible after eating them, Kona Nui. Yeah, right. It's pretty simple, you know. Unfortunately, that's the feeling she get from grains and dairy too. So that's it. You know, it's it's so odd that she and I got married and we both have similar issues. It's just just really, really kind of weird. Are you able to grow at all where you are, Big Kahuna? Oh, they're talking about uh, plants. That's right. That's right. I remember these. I remember uh, Kahuna saying he's got he's got like a truckload of stems. <laughs> he's got to get rid of something along those lines. I remember <laughs> something like that. I I had a friend of mine. He had this a section in his backyard. Uh, I was a rectangular section, and it had like eight foot tall fence all the way around it. So the only time those plants ever got sunshine was when the sun was directly overhead. I guess they did all right. But he's growing, you know, an illegal product. <laughs> he's got he's got a rectangular set of fence. He's probably even got netting on the top for all I know. This dude was interesting. And so that was the extent of how he grew his uh his ganja, man. That's how he grew it. In his backyard. In uh, zone six, mind you. So he's asking, Donks is asking Kahuna that. Kahuna says, yep. I got you. He says, that's cannabis, Kai. I got you. Yep. Has Joey ever been used? Let's see. Let me read this one here. Justin Puzio asks, has Joey ever used an old cannoli as a pipe? <laughs> I don't think Joey smokes. I, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think Joey said he's never smoked, which, you know, that's that's really smart. And uh, that will certainly pay off. Not never having smoked. That's definitely compared to if if he had. Has Joey ever used an old cannoli as a pipe? I don't believe so. I don't think he smokes. In fact, I don't think he's ever smoked. I see what yeah, Docs is saying uh what they're gonna grow. I see, yeah. Yeah, well listen, um what part of the country are you in, Donks? If you care to share, if not, that's fine. I know Kahuna Nui. I mean, if he's going to pop seeds in, it's it's going to be in the house or in a greenhouse, right? Um, being up in Minnesota. I don't know when they can start to plant. For us here in Zone 6 on the north shores of Lake Erie, we do not put stuff in the ground. I don't put stuff in the ground until Cinco de Mayo. That's the 5th of May. 
Typically, after the 5th of May, don't have to worry about frost. That's also the time in which I bring my fig trees out of the outbuilding. I put my, I take my fig trees out of the, uh, the dormancy that they've been in, in the outbuilding, and I, I put them outside. I don't let them get exposed to frost. They can. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do okay, but they, they won't produce like they would if, uh, if I wait. And so I bring them out after the 5th of May in our area. I'm guessing uh, Donks isn't going to be able to have those ground in the ground outside until maybe late May. I don't know. Let us know. Yeah, the shell cracks or pops. Yeah, I know. Um, I learned a trick from a brother-in-law of mine years ago that, um, and I'm talking about gardening. <laughs> I don't, I don't grow those things. Not that there's anything wrong with it, mind you. Um, but he used to take his seeds and put them on a wet napkin, and just uh, you know, put another wet napkin over it, and uh, just keep it damp, I guess, in the once a day, and let them germinate like that. And you have to be real delicate with stuff like that. And it probably depends on which type of seeds they are, right? Um, and uh, then he would uh, put them into a little tray. So that's how he was doing it. And uh, Kahuna he says, Donks, I don't, but my neighbors do. Now, what does Donk say? If they ever need any seeds or CLOS, just let me know the name or desire effect, and I'll send some seeds or clones, whichever suits them best. Okay. Well, that's, that's interesting. We got some uh, docs. is quite the expert, it sounds like. That's cool. I never ate eggs until I was about 20 years old. Really? That's kind of wild. Never ate eggs till you're 20. Man, growing up, you guys ever have meatloaf? That's the one thing they did in our family is put an egg, a, a hard-boiled egg, obviously peeled, inside a meatloaf before it got cooked, you know? And so I um, always had, when you cut the meatloaf, you had that circular piece of egg in the middle of it. Depending on where you were cutting the egg, there was a, a circle of yellow, too. <laughs> that was kind of interesting in the meatloaf. But, yeah, that's kind of interesting that you never had eggs until you're 20 years old. It's pretty wild. I'll tell you one thing that I, I absolutely love. You make a hamburger. You take an egg that's, um, I got to have a yolk that's not cooked. I love an an egg yolk that is that's that's my that's my butter man, that is my butter. Take a, a hamburger, put an egg on top of it, and you break the egg, and that's just some that is some really good fat for you too. By the way, um, people, <laughs> all this crazy talk about eggs in the past is uh, just so absolutely ignorant. That's a good fat for you. Eggs are good for you. Newsflash. No, eggs are bad. Eggs are good. Eggs are bad. Eggs are good for you. Trust me. Eggs are good. In fact, most eggs, I believe, most eggs are edible, but I don't think they taste very good, like goose eggs and other eggs like that. I don't think they taste as good as, say, uh, chicken eggs. In fact, uh, when you go to a place and you ask them what they feed their chickens, if they tell you nothing, those are free-range chickens. They're eating what they're supposed to eat. Bugs, right? And other things. Seeds. And Docs is uh, professing his uh, expertise. Which I know nothing about. <laughs> I'm not real educated on strains. I just get in line when the pipe's going around. <laughs> okay. The ones that are willing to get on the forums anyways. Okay. And Kahuna Nui says it's legal to grow there now. Interesting. 
Does that mean you have to have like um, a, a doctor's prescription? Is that how that works, or is it just plain simply legal, like like a like a beer or a shot of vodka, just plain legal? Okay, Doc says I'm Mid Atlantic, Kentucky. How about that? Or is he answering me? There's no capital K, so <laughs> say Mid Atlantic, Kentucky. Yeah, I guess that's some good growing area too, right? Probably can grow some good. Uh, Other weeds as well, like tobacco. That's not wacky. And Doc says that um, I could go ahead and plant now, and they'll be good. I used to have to wait until end of April. Really? That's interesting. So yeah, he's he's uh you probably zone seven. Doc's, are you zone seven? Let us know. Probably. If you can plant now, I'm guessing. Yeah, end of April. Okay, well, so that's not too far from us. Uh, end of April being Cinco de Mayo. Right, there you go. That's only B. My meat don't loaf. <laughs> no meat loaf for him. No eggs in there either. I can't get stuff that's, let's see here, uh, docs. I can't get stuff that's easy to grow, uplifting, smackdowning, fruity, funky, killer, mid-strength, CBD, pain, killer, depression. I can get pretty much whatever you want. Okay, this is a crosstalk in the chat here, I guess. And uh, Joey, Joey opened up the gates. He uh, took everybody out of... Uh, he, he removed everybody from the ban list, and so uh, there's a fresh start. And we have Eggplant Frank in the house. Eggplant Frank, you get the virgin bell, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and Joey's forgiveness is in order. Speak, speaking of eggs, good morning, everyone. <laughs> All righty, Frank. And then talking to dogs, you got a good variety. Okay, so basically some crosstalk about the their hobby. And uh Eggplant Frank says he thinks eggs are excellent. He likes them. I like eggs too, man. I'll tell you, like I said, that's my butter. I'll try to get caught up in here. Excellent. That's funny. I can play a phrase. A little play on words there. Okay, look at these guys are getting into their uh, serious farming where they the only don't have to cut out the the uh seedlings for uh, male versus female. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Cockington says, I have a bunch of eggplants started. Well, now you'll have the ingredients for a caponado if you make grow some tomatoes too, right? Ah, I was referring to you, Kai. Kentucky is not on the ocean. I'm in North Carolina since you drug it out of me. Well, I wasn't trying to dig too, too much there, honestly, Donks. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that makes more sense. So you're probably even zone eight, maybe, even. I'm not sure what, what, what zone that is, but that's cool. Very cool. You know, when you read chat here, you got to leave things wide open because a lot of fat, fat finger mistakes and things that are not always intelligible, if you know what I'm saying. So you just kind of keep things open in terms of how you interpret. At least I do. Donk says prohibition land. <laughs> so Kahuna says plain legal, but can have can only have four budding plants at a time. Zone four here and zone three up at the cabin where neighbors are growing. I 
So four budding plants at a time. Interesting. Hey, eggplant Frank says, I will behave. I am reformed. Eggplant, it's good to see you in here. I'm glad to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing well uh, in the land down under. Tell us, what is the local temperature there today? You don't have to convert it to Fahrenheit either. Uh, let us know if you care to share. Hey, hey, DG's in the house. DG, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing great. Today's going to be a great day. It's Friday. Um, working on some things for you and Joey. Hope it's all going well. I sent a couple songs over to Joey on um, email, and so he's got to give them a listen and figure out if he likes one or the other or if he doesn't like them both or if he likes them both uh, so we can take the uh, intro to the next level. Good morning to DG. Delighted to see you in here, buddy. I am going to snooze to Kai's voice. Have a great day. <laughs> okay, that's great, Frank. Good to see you in here. We're running long in the tooth here. Look at we're 831 already. Nothing better than a buttery egg. Oh my goodness gracious. I'll tell you what, on top of a hamburger, that's just heaven. Yep. Newburn. You have a daughter in Newburn. That's cool, Kahuta Nui. There's some big corporations down there too in uh, Newborn. Uh, that's a uh, that's an interesting area. I've I've uh, actually looked at uh, that area in the past. I don't know how close Newburn. How far is that from the actual ocean? I think it's pretty close. I'm guessing half an hour, but I'm not sure. To get to the ocean, that is. I think it's on it's on a big river, right? So um, this is something interesting. I, I'm not aware of. Um, he's talking about that's one. That's one thing about prohibition land. No plant counts here. So this is something I, I'm just not aware of. I'm not. I'm not uh, really up on the terminology there. No plant counts here. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not following that. And Doc says plants can't count anyway. Ah. <laughs> uh, Dox is asking if she's married. <laughs> Dox is working the angle on on uh, Kahuni's gal, <laughs> his daughter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Hey, DG says it's going outstanding, my friend. Wanted to let, wanted to get on here with uh, my boy Joey C this week, and I was late all week at work. We'll see about this weekend, maybe. Exciting to see what you got cooked up, Kai. Well, that's great, DG. Listen, I think the folks are really looking forward to uh, another show with DG and Joey C. I think it's going to be a blast. Um, there's just a, a great chemistry there. I, I Believe me, I know you know what I'm talking about, DG. There's just a real special chemistry there that... Um, I think the folks are really going to love. I think it's going to be a big hit, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I was delighted to hear about it. Uh, I, quite frankly, DG, the folks can't get enough of you, man. Um, it, it's this. This is this is going to be a welcome sight. Let's just put it that way. So, anyways, um, let's see what else we got here. Some cross talk in the chat. Cheers, Donkey Scold. Newburn is practically in the ocean. Yeah, it's it's right on the it's, it's right on the river, right? I mean, you might be fresh water right there, but yeah, it's real. Is it practically in the ocean? Okay, so it's right on the coast, I guess. Okay, I'm trying to think when I when I looked at it on the map, it's like um, I want to say that's a river, but it is a pretty open bay, so maybe maybe that does maybe that is salt water there. I don't know. I figured it was a river though, but you know you can't tell. 
because you don't know what the depth of the rivers are, so you don't know if that's a saltwater location. Because if there's, if the rivers doesn't have that high of a flow, then the water going in it's more of a bay than a river. If you know what I'm talking about, like for example, the the uh, Rio de la Plata. I mean, they used to say miles away from the from the um, outlet of that river, they'd still pull fresh water from the ships, which is kind of hard to believe. Yeah, the humidity, the humidity down there is really something else. Eggplant Frank says, hopefully we'll get 80 Fahrenheit tomorrow, which is not bad for fall and winter. I'll tell you, yeah, that's not bad at all, man. Sounding pretty good right now. All right. And uh, DJ says, salud. I think it's voice to text. <laughs> he says, it's a joke. Big Kahuna said he could only grow four legally since it's legal here anyways. It's basically same penalty for anything under 99 plants. Ah, I got you. I got you. Ah, well, it'll be funny next time. Okay, so you got to educate me. And it's nice for, for the other folks, too, because I can't believe I'm the only one. That's It's possible. But uh, anyways, listen, we want, we're running along in the tooth here. Thanks for coming in here, folks. We hope you enjoyed the show. I really appreciate you coming in here. We can't do what we do here at Carolina TV without the folks, the great supporters we have in the chat, the supporters of Carolina TV. Don't forget to, um, if you can, uh, hit the like button. It does help the channel. We're going to be remonetized hopefully here in this coming month. And um, also, I think we'll 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 do the outro. Um, yeah, let me run that Chiron just for a moment here, if you can. Um, so this this is the um, to help Joey support Joey for his uh, Las Vegas Hackamania trip. I think he's somewhere around 200 to his goal, something like that. I don't know. There's so many more viewers on Joey's shows, but, you know, we do what we can here. We run the Chiron at the bottom, and um, I think we'll close out the show. To, usually I try to close out the show with Miss Honeybee's favorite song, which is the Heartless Blues. I don't think I have that loaded on uh, Rumble Studios yet, so I'll get that next time. Miss Honeybee, and uh, I think this time we'll we'll roll out today's show with the uh, promotion for uh, Catalano TV's uh, wood products. So um, take a look here, and uh, you'll appreciate the um, the wooden products like Joey's wooden toes and all these wonderful wonderful products that uh, you you can see on here. So thanks for tuning in, folks. Chividiamo, cheers, Lakayam Nastrovia. Don't forget to check out um, Joey C's Walk and Talks, the main draw of Catalano TV. And I uh, hope you all have a great day. <laughs>